Now, uh, we finally arrived at uh, spherical polar coordinates, the last standard coordinate system. Here, this coordinate system is important when you deal with spheres or portion of spheres, right. We will see uh, how we apply spherical polar coordinates in such situations when we uh, arrive at examples, all right. Now, we will consider a sphere centered at the origin. Uh, now, take a point on the sphere, let that point be P. Now, the distance from O to P uh, can be taken as R and now O P is a line segment. The line segment makes an angle with the positive direction of Z. Now, let this angle be phi. Okay. Now, we project O P onto x y plane. So, like this and the projection will be O Q. Right. Now, this angle, the, the angle uh, between O Q and the positive direction of x axis uh, can be taken as theta. Right. Now, uh, from this diagram you can see that if this is r and if this is phi, right, the, uh, this angle between the angle between O p and O q is 90 minus phi, because z axis and O q are, are mutually perpendicular. Therefore, if this angle is phi, the angle between O p and O q will be 90 minus phi. Therefore, uh, this length O q is r sin phi as I indicated there, it is r sin phi. Now, after that once you project O p onto x y plane, the projection will be O q. Now, again you project O q onto x axis and similarly you project O q onto y axis. Now, this will be since this angle is theta, O x is O q cos theta like this and since know what since we know what O q is, you plug in R sin phi for O q and you will end up with this one. And then O y, again you project it onto this one, this angle is 90 minus theta, therefore this is uh, O q sin theta, O y is O q sin theta. Again you plug in the expression we obtained for O q, then you will end up with this one. And it is a piece of cake to find O z. It is simply this, since this angle is theta, this is r cos phi. Okay. Now, uh, we need to look at two things. First is how this forms a rectangular coordinate system. Second, what is the infinitesimal volume element of this coordinate system? Because we need that to evaluate integrals associated with this system. Right. Okay. We will move to the next one. Again, uh, uh, again, I want to tell you that in this case, uh, this curve is in fact, if you take this as a globe, as the globe, this this curve is a longitude. Hmm? Likewise, in this case, this is a longitude. Uh, now, uh, let this point be P. I have forgotten to uh, indicate that, even though it is not necessary, let us take it as P. Now, the, the, the line segment which connects O and P is of length R, right. Uh, and therefore, to increase R, to increase the, bit, increase the distance between O and P, you have to move along this direction. That vector can be taken, that direction can be, the unit vector along that direction can be taken as r hat. Hmm? Now, if you take phi, to increase phi, you have to move along that longitude this way. So, to increase phi, you have to move along this direction. The unit vector along this direction can be taken as phi hat. 
that is this. Now, finally, once you project this point P onto Q, uh, which is on XY plane, to increase theta, theta is this angle, to increase theta, you have to move along this circle this way on xy plane if it is if you if i uh, without change uh, uh, without changing in fact this is theta hat without changing this vector without changing changing the direction and the size you can take this up there now th this is where you have r hat phi hat and theta hat now if you look at this diagram you have them in this or you have this orientation and if you take uh, x y z coordinate system you have it in this way when you take a screwdriver and move it in this direction the head moves along its direction it moves along the uh, third coordinate axis similarly here if you take r and phi look we have to rotate the screwdriver like this huh? like this then the head moves inside along theta hat direction that means r hat phi hat and theta hat form a right hand coordinate system those directions therefore we write it like this r phi and theta it is a r phi theta coordinate system r is the first coordinate phi is the second theta is the third hmm? like you have the similar similar orientation like here in the place of I mean here it is rotated but uh, right because you might see that r hat is in the direction of z yes in this diagram it looks like that but if you uh, take this as the first coordinate if you assume that this is the second and if you take a screwdriver and rotate it in this direction the head moves in the direction of theta hat therefore uh, the first coordinate this is the second coordinate this uh, theta is the third coordinate now uh, just I mean to solve problems you do not need this, but to understand the coordinate system you need that orientation. Now, we will move uh, to the next one that is infinitesimal volume element. Uh, we do need that almost all the time uh, when you deal with some evaluation of, a, of an integral using this coordinate system. Now, this uh, little tricky, but you have to you know. Uh, pay attention to that. Now, uh, again let this be uh, this point B P and the distance between O and P be R. Now, to increase R you, uh, to give a infinitesimal increment to R that is delta R you have to do it in this way right. The, so, this line segment is delta R. Now, to increase phi if you increase phi a little bit that is delta phi then uh, you I mean this the uh, this is the result of that increment. What is this length? This length is ok this is the radius radius is r the angle associated with this I mean the, the this arc length is delta phi therefore, you know uh, the arc length is r delta phi here this length is r delta phi this delta r those two are not very difficult, but the last one is little tricky. Now, once you project this onto x y plane this where you have o q. So, the angle between o q and the x axis is theta. Now, if you want to give a little increment to that that increment should be delta theta. So, the rotation will be like this. So, what is this? length that is little tricky look length of o q I mean the, you move along a, uh, along the circumference of a circle the radius of the circle is given by o q because to increase theta you have to move along x y plane right. Therefore, uh, the radius of this you know after the projection the length of o q we, we saw it earlier it is r sin phi therefore, the radius of this circle is r sin phi. The angle associated with this arc is delta theta because we give a 
infinitesimal increment to theta. Therefore, radius is r sin phi, angle is delta theta. Therefore, this arc length is r sin phi delta theta, radius times the angle. Now, that is this arc length. If you take this up there, that is this one. So, this is delta r, this is r, d, r delta phi. This length is, I, I did not indicate this because you know uh, it will complicate the things. Uh, this one is r sin phi delta theta, this arc length. Therefore, the, now when delta r, delta theta and delta phi all go to 0, this becomes a cuboid. With this setup, it is not a cuboid because you have certain uh, curves like edges, but once delta r, delta theta and delta phi go to 0, you do not have that. You have a perfect cuboid kind, kind of thing. Therefore, you have a shape like this. This is delta r. As I explained you, this is r delta phi because that is this arc length, uh, this arc length. This arc length was obtained here on the xy plane. Then we projected it up there. So, this is we, we saw this as r sin phi delta theta. So, this is r sin phi delta theta. Now, the volume should be the product of these sides. So, the volume of the infinitesimal element is delta r times r delta phi times this one, r sin phi delta theta. Now, you can uh, gather these terms and you, you will end up with this one. Now, when delta r, delta phi and delta theta all go to 0, you can replace these guys by dr, d phi, d theta. So, you will end up with this one. So, this is the infinitesimal volume element uh, in the case of the spherical polar coordinates. Now, if you want to in, uh, deal with some kind of an integration, uh, like in x y z plane, you take it as d x d y d z. Probably in uh, cylindrical polar coordinates, you get uh, rho uh, d rho d theta d z. Similarly, here you have this additional factor. This probably out of all these coordinate system, this is the most complicated one. You have like r squared sin phi as that scale factor. We will see what, what it is later uh, when we discuss the Jacobian. Uh, now, this is the infinitesimal volume element. So, no matter what it is, when you, uh, when you integrate something in a volume, you always have to take the in, in the integrand, you need to have r squared sin phi dr d theta sorry dr d phi d theta as your infinitesimal volume element right okay now uh, after this we need to go through some examples to see uh, how we evaluate certain integrals uh, in inside spheres or inside a portion of spheres uh, when, when, uh, when we uh, deal with those problems, we always have to take this as your infinitesimal volume element. Okay. Thank you.